In this movie, we'll learn how to access our models through the Rails console in order to create new records in the database. I want to show you two different techniques to do it. The first I refer to as new slash save, and the second is create. New save is going to have three basic steps to it. We're going to instantiate a Ruby object, or create an instance of a class, and then we're going to set the values on it and save it to the database. Create works exactly the same way, except that it does all three of those things in one step. Other than that, they work exactly the same. Let's take a look at each of these in the console. So here I am in my command line, and I've already navigated into my Rails application, and I'm going to type Rails console to launch the console. Once it responds that my development environment is loaded, we can create a new instance of our subject class. We saw this in the last movie, actually. And this is just basic Ruby, right? We have this Ruby class that we declared, and we're creating a new instance of it. It just happens to also be an active record class, but it's just a basic Ruby class. So subject equals subject new, and it responds with, OK, I created the subject, and here's my visual representation of what that looks like. And it shows you all the attributes that are there. Notice that ID is nil. So the subject is an object that we're working with. It's loaded into memory, but it's not saved to the database. Once we do save it to the database, the primary key has an auto increment feature on it that will make sure that this gets assigned the next value in the database. So if we see nil, then we know it's not saved to the database. In fact, we can actually type subject.new underscore record question mark, and Rails will tell us, yes, this is a new record, meaning it has not been saved to the database. So now that we have this object that's ready for us to populate, we need to give it some values. So subject.name equals, and I'll just call it something for now. There it is. It responds with something to let me know that it set it. And if I say subject.name, there it is. It stored that value. Now that's still not saved in the database. We've just set a value on an object that's being stored in memory. Now we could go through every single one of the attributes and assign a value the exact same way. But a faster way, and more commonly what you'll see, is to do it all in one step. So something like this, subject equals subject.new, and then as an argument to new, we pass in a hash. And the hash has keys, are symbols, which correspond to the column names, name, position, and visible. And then the values are the values we want to set. So name, first name, position one, visible, true. So we create an object and assign values at the same time. Still, though, notice that it's subject ID nil. So in order to save it, common sense, we say subject.save. And it responds with true. It did save it. Subject.new record, false. It's not a new record anymore. In fact, if we say subject.id, it'll tell us that its ID is 1. So as you can see, creating new records in the database is trivial. We just simply create a new object, assign some values, and say save, and it takes care of all the SQL that we need. It writes the SQL, puts the record in the database, and then finds out what the ID was for that record and brings that back into the object. It takes care of all of that for us. It's really handy. Now notice that it responded with true here when we did save. That's great because then in our controller, when we're actually doing saves, we can say if subject.save then puts saved, else puts not saved. And guess what? It actually executed it here, if save, and it attempted the save and returned the value true, which then says, OK, I'm going to output saved. So that's the first technique, the new save technique. Create a new record, populate its values, either at the time you create it or afterwards, and then save it. The second technique that I mentioned for adding records is to use create, and it works the exact same way. We're going to say subject equals, call the subject model, tell it to create, and use these values. We're passing in a hash just like we did before. The only difference is we don't get an opportunity to do anything with the record before we save it. We're going to do it all in one step. Instantiate it, fill its values, and save it. And the result of that is not going to be true and false. Instead, the result of that is going to be the object itself, so that now we sort of caught the object in the variable subject. And we know that it actually did do the save because we can see the ID here is assigned the value of 2. And we could try out new record on it if we wanted to to actually test whether it was said new record. But we know that it would. Notice something else about this subject that was just saved, which is that for the created at and updated at values, Rails populated them with the current time. It did that for us automatically because we had fields with these magic names, created at and updated at. It says, oh, I see a created at field. 
I assume that you want me to update that with the value of the time when I create it. So it does that for you. And every time it updates it, it says, oh, I see it updated at field. I should update that every time I update the record. It handles that all for you in Active Record. You don't have to remember to write SQL to do that. So out of these two methods, you will definitely use the new save method more than you'll use the create method. But that's all there is to adding records to the database.